Hello friends. Today's video is going to be on Touchable Pro. Um, about a year ago, I did a video on the first version of Touchable and I really liked it then, but this new version is so much better. It is a upgrade versus an update. So the features are quite a bit more vast. Um, it can do so much more, it has a lot more features. And what I enjoy about it the most is that it runs much smoother and it connects way easier. Um, if you had seen the video from the last version, there there was some issues sometimes connecting it that were a little bit frustrating at times, but I have not had any problems with the new version. Right when I open it up and I open Ableton up, everything just connects right away. So I have not had any problems. Um, I'm going to be demoing it on both the iPad and the iPhone, which I don't have with me right now, but um, when they had, when the um, makers of Touchable had reached out to me and I asked them if they had a iPhone version, um, they did say that it would work on iPhone, but it wasn't exactly optimized for it. But I'm going to tell you, I have not had any issues with it on iPhone. It's a um, obviously a smaller version of it versus the iPad, but it... It hasn't given me any issues. It connects just as easily and it's really handy because, you know, it's so much smaller. I can just take it into the vocal booth. Plus another issue that I run into with using my iPad is that it is an older iPad. <laughs> so therefore the battery is not all that great. It tends to die a little bit easier, but um, just because this app is a bit um, battery intensive, I guess, because it's doing a lot in real time. So the plus side though is that it works on older iPads. This is like, I think the iPad mini, maybe second generation. So that's awesome because I'm not ready to <laughs> buy a new iPad yet. So it's been working perfectly fine. I would imagine if you have a newer version that it's even better. So um, I'm going to go on ahead and start with the demo. Um, I'm probably not going to do an outro on this video. So I will just go on ahead and say now that if you like this video and videos like it, um, please subscribe to my channel. Give this one a thumbs up. I have lots of other gear review videos and also just music related videos and music. So thank you so much for watching and I'll go on ahead and get this demo started. And one last quick thing, sorry, before I get it started, I just want to let you know um, what I've tested this on. So I have tried it just on Ableton 10. I'm on the most current version, um, I think it's 10.6. I have not done 10.1. I know that there's a beta right now of it, but I have not tested it out yet. I'm I'm a little untrusting of betas just because they do tend to be a little bit on the glitchy side. So I have not tried it on that yet. And I also have not tried it on Ableton 9. So I don't want to make any promises that it'll work on either one of them. But I have, I have good faith that they would work. But don't hold me to that. <laughs> All right. Now on to the demo. All right, here is Touchable Pro on my Fossil iPad Mini, and it has been working just perfectly fine. Of course, yours will probably look a little bit different whenever you open it because, you know, this is just the session that I have. I have a few very basic, basic clips loaded in here. So um, the very top portion, you'll see it has all your standard functions. Um, your transport control is going to be up there. So you have your stop, play, record. You can turn on your metronome. You can adjust the volume of your metronome. And um, you also have other basic functions like your undo and redo, which is amazing because I am always undoing takes when I take this into my vocal booth. So um, as you can also see here, you have a few of the other functions in regards to automation, recording clips, and also the capture function, which is awesome. You have a lot of different settings going on here. This allows you to change the way that the clips interact with each other, um, as well as messing with the layout of the app itself. I haven't really found myself going in there and changing too much of the settings. Everything was pretty much plug and play, but I do a lot of my work in um, session, I mean, in arrangement view, sorry, versus session view. So um, I don't do too much with clips anymore. Everything is pretty much done in arrangement, but you know, if I do start doing more session view things, I can see myself in there. But yeah, there's this quick setup guide and also access to the full manual in here. 
Okay, we're going to jump on ahead back over to the main view. So right now I have it stacked up. And so you just see two versions of the same thing. But I'm going to go on ahead and show you just real quick. You can change that stacked version. But we are going to go back and I'm going to make the top portion into clips because it is a little bit more useful when it's two separate things. And you can see now that the clips are displayed. And I'm going to just show real quick the responsiveness of the volume. I unfortunately don't have a mirror image of what it's doing on the computer, but I promise it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Here we can look at the plugins. I don't have very many on there right now. It's just really a basic, basic set. We're going to jump over to the pads. This is kind of a 32 pad version of what you would see like on a push when you're in um, a key mode. This is an actual like keyboard mode and then an eight pad, just pad mode. And then we'll just bring it back over to control volume. And then I just want to go over real quick the XY module. So you can map pretty much any parameter to each of these nodes and it'll record the movements. It's really cool, but I will go into more detail maybe on another video. So I want to talk real quick about a couple of the other parameters you can control. You can control panning left and right, of course. You also have toggle switches for activating and deactivating, and you can see that it grays out the actual track, which is really nice. It's just really always helpful to have visual feedback of what's going on. And then you have your record arm and solo. So we're gonna go on ahead and go over to the IO section. So you have your kind of modern mon monitoring <laughs> control, whether you want it to be in auto or off. I usually like to just keep it auto, keep it simple. And then you can take a look at your channels, you know, where all the routing is happening, as well as where you want all the MIDI to be coming from. So everything you can do pretty much in Ableton, you can do here on the screen. There's this bottom bar that, depending on what screen you're in, what kind of activity you're doing on Touchable, um, it has different functions. So on the screen that we're on right now, it just kind of adjusts the layout. But if you're in that XY mode that we were looking at earlier, it can do a number of different things. So it just depends on what screen you're in. It does different things. It's not all the same function. So I'd like to go on ahead and do a demo of the clip launching abilities of the program. So these are just really, really basic clips that I just kind of put together to demo for the video. So I apologize. They're not spectacular. Um, but we're going to go ahead and change the volume and go ahead and get it started. So you can see all the clips relation to each other. Most of them I just have on a little four bar loop. Uh, I'll adjust the volume here. So we'll mess with some of the parameters. Um, probably going to just to do the delay. It's a little bit more of an obvious change. down I ended up having to use my finger and smudge the screen because my stylus was not cooperating. And then just real quick wanted to show you the scene launching. It has all the functionality of just a standard launch controller. So we're going to go on ahead and end this not so great loop. And I just want to show you real quick the functionality on the iPhone. Quickly, I wanted to show you Touchable Pro on iPhone. So as you can see, it is a condensed 
version of Touchable Pro for iPad. But functionality wise, it is the same. I can come in here and launch my clips just the same as I would on the iPad version. I will spare you the loop. I just want to show you that everything is working as it should. Um, I haven't had any issues with the iPhone version, even though it was um, optimized for iPad. Here you can see that my meters are acting normal and I can adjust the volume and I can adjust the panning sends the toggles you know soloing muting everything that I can do on the iPad I can do here just um, it doesn't have that stack mode which I'm okay with it's definitely not a deal breaker but yeah I just wanted to show you the um, iPhone version of it real quick so I'm going to go on ahead and conclude the video I highly recommend this app it's totally worth the $30 for all the control you can get from this and it being wireless you get a lot of the functionality that you would from a hardware controller like a Akai APC 40 or a push with saving a lot of money and it being wireless again cannot stress how amazing that is and also just so that you're aware this is available for android users so it's not only for iphone so it's a very inclusive app which we can all appreciate if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will answer them to the best of my abilities. Again, thank you so much for watching and until next time.